All right, you are on the platform. A very good morning uh, to you all. Um, gosh, school kids, aren't they just terrible, terrible things, school children? No, they're not. Most of us have been one at some stage or, or another. And we have, for the last couple of weeks, been trying to get a handle from the government on how it regards an event happening tomorrow which could potentially take tens of thousands of young New Zealanders out of school, well, I'd say technically illegally. It is the School Strike for Climate 2024. Um, and the school strike is basically, I think, a few kids who've been indoctrinated by their parents um, waving a few placards that they've made with their teachers around and a whole lot of other people going to play the modern-day equivalent of Spacey's uh, for the afternoon. Uh, I'm not... Maybe that's too cynical. But last time we had one of these things, Labor was in power, and they tacitly encouraged them. Is that, that this government's attitude or not? We are joined now by Associate Education Minister uh, David Seymour, who, due to the reluctance, I think, of Erica Stanford to say anything uh, controversial or that might get her in trouble, um, has taken the lead on this issue. Um, David, good morning to you. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, Sean. <coughs> All right. Does the government have a position on the school strike for climate? Um, if your question is, has the government, you know, had a discussion in Cabinet and decided what its official policy is, then, then no. Um, if you want to know what I think and what most, I'm sure, government ministers uh, would say, uh, then it's very simple. Uh, kids need to be in school learning, and that might be more helpful uh, than going out protesting. Well, that is a change of position from an administration, the previous administration, which tacitly endorsed and in some ways uh, via the Prime Minister, uh, Jacinda Ardern, encouraged kids to wag school. I think if you look at what's happened in the last 20 years or so, uh, you've had uh, a change in the way the curriculum is made in New Zealand. Basically, there's some high-level principles uh, and you can make up whatever content you like within that. Now, in many ways, that was seen as world-leading. I think what it's seen is a real variation in standards uh, and a lot of kids missing out on real knowledge. You've seen the same thing in the NCEA uh, where you can get credits uh, for doing almost anything. Uh, what you'll see from this government is a clear shift back towards a curriculum that is knowledge-based. So what you can expect to see at school is a knowledgeable adult standing at the front of the classroom, transferring a body of knowledge that's agreed by the community. Uh, I think in terms of attitude, you're going to see a, a shift towards, look, school is something you do after you've dealt with every other concern in society, to school is the number one priority for young people uh, because attendance at school and learning uh, will actually equip you for probably another 80 years. I mean, just remember kids at school today uh, many, if not most of them, will actually live into the 2200s. What is your expectation tomorrow then of schools and how should they treat absences or mass ab absences? I mean, we can take it no one's going to be at Wellington High, for example, tomorrow afternoon. Well, I would expect schools uh, to treat that. Uh, as an absence, uh, you know, un un unless of course they can show that somehow uh, this is part of their curriculum and, and this is why I open talking about curriculum. Uh, it's quite possible that some schools will have judged uh, going out and protesting being a, a, a quote unquote social action uh, that is a legitimate part of their curriculum. Now, that's why I think we actually need to... Well, would, would you consider uh, that to be under any circumstance a legitimate part of a curriculum? Well, I don't, and that's why I open by saying one of the things well, we need to do is... is this the message? The curriculum. Yeah, OK. So are you saying to schools that they should not regard this as part of the curriculum? Are you saying they should not tolerate people absenting themselves, truanting themselves well, tomorrow? Well, that, that is absolutely my view, and it's a view I'm, I'm sure would be shared by most ministers. 
Um, but I just make the point, and this has come up in a few discussions lately between what's currently happening under policies of the old government and where the new ministers and the, and the new coalition government are taking us. Uh, so, yep, there might well be a situation where uh, some school regarded this as a legitimate part of their curriculum and exercise. If they did, uh, that has to change. Uh, but if it's, that's the only exception I can see uh, where this wouldn't be truanting and they shouldn't be marked absent, uh, and that is going to affect the judgment of that school's performance because ultimately we want schools uh, to be having kids in class uh, delivering a knowledge-rich curriculum. All right. What is your message, if they're listening, and some do, directly to school children about tomorrow, to students up and down the country? who are going to be getting and have been getting propagandised largely by the Green and Labor Party or people associated with them to take part in well, this? Well, first of all, you should be in school and you should be wanting to go to school because you know that you're getting valuable knowledge that will set you up for life. Um, but the other message I would give to younger people is I recognise, because I felt this way as a teenager myself, uh, real anxiety about the future of the planets and what sort of life we will have in it. Uh, and it's certainly true, and I know there'll be a range of views on this, but you know, climate change is something that is happening uh, and it's something that will present challenges. Uh, we can argue about the exact extent to which it's been caused by people or whatever, but you know, it's, it's a thing and, and we should worry about it. But it's also something that we are actually able to overcome and adapt to uh, we're able to change uh, the way our infrastructure works. Uh, in some ways, climate change will be beneficial. In other ways, it won't be. Um, but it, it is actually something that we will work through and solve. It's not something that you need to be anxious about. Uh, I think that some people in our society uh, have spent too much time and frankly been a bit irresponsible in the way that they have tried to make younger people fearful and anxious about climate change. Okay. Oh, of it course, Palestine's involved in it too, it. apparently. There's going to be a bit about Palestine and stop the genocide, which seems well, really sad to me that kids are being told that's a genocide. Well, I'll just make a couple of points about that. I mean, first of all, I think it's really important to understand the definition of words. I, I had some Palestine protesters attempt to disrupt a public meeting I held about six weeks back. I, I asked them uh, what the definition of genocide was, and none of them could tell me. And after about two minutes of, no, no, you say, and I said, well, actually, I know what it is. I'm not the one sh shouting it. Uh, one of them started furiously Googling on their phone. Um, so, uh, you, you know, it, it's, it's so you can't, if you didn't laugh, you'd cry. But actually, genocide uh, is a deliberate attempt uh, to eliminate a, a group of people with a certain characteristic. Um, that's not what's happening in the Middle East. The Israelis have attempted to respond to a terrorist attack. Uh, where the terrorists hide amongst uh, a population of people uh, and they've made every effort to make sure that uh, they only target the terrorists but the terrorists keep hiding behind the people. Yeah. 